How would you envision the new Australian government's approach towards China uh, be different than that of the, the former Australian government? What we're looking for is an exercise, a greater emphasis on diplomacy as the first reaction to being able to work with China and work with changing relations within the Pacific Islands, et cetera. And Penny Wong has certainly shown that this is the step she wants to take. The visit to the Pacific Islands, uh, the Solomons and so on, is the first step in that direction. They are also visiting Indonesia shortly as well. So there's a greater emphasis on engagement within the region. Now, the key factor is to turn that engagement into cooperative engagement in the region. And Foreign Minister Wang Yi has already extended that offer by inviting Australia and New Zealand to be involved in further discussions about the proposals that were presented to Fiji. I mean, Australia had the tradition of walking in locksteps strategically and militarily with Washington, um, I mean, even more so during the former Australian cabinet. Do you think this is still the case? The nature of uh, Canberra's close geopolitical ties with Washington will change at all, uh, given that there's new cabinet in Canberra? We think there will be slow changes that are taking place. Over the last decade of the previous government, you are correct, it was very much in lockstep with the Americans. But governments under uh, Malcolm Fraser, under Whitlam, under Keating, were all looking at an independent foreign policy. So in many cases, they agreed with what the United States was doing, but they also pursued independent agendas. So the establishment of APEC, for instance, was initiated by Australia, much against the wishes of Washington at the time. So we're hoping to see a return to that independent Australian foreign policy, where they are not always in lockstep with what is happening in Washington. 